Hello everyone, welcome to our Sub from Car Wars channel. In today's video I'm going to explain how the AC evaporator core works. This is going to be a continuation of previous videos where I have been explaining how the other components of the AC system operate. By learning the function of each one, it's going to be a lot easier for you to troubleshoot any issues with your AC system. So no different than before, I'm going to bring the camera up close so you can see this better. So let's get started. Okay, so now that we have the camera up close, let's go over the drawing. The last video I made explain the function of the expansion valve and if you remember the liquid line which is at the bottom of the expansion valve when a block type is the one that carries the liquid refrigerant, the high pressure liquid refrigerant. As it enters the expansion valve its flow is restricted. It's important to note that as the pressure of the refrigerant drops so does the temperature and the temperature of the line that enters the evaporator is going to be anywhere from 38 to 40 degrees Fahrenheit. And now we can go from here to the evaporator core. So what happens? So as the flow gets restricted, it turns into a low pressure liquid because it has more room. And to make this example a lot easier to understand, I drew here a garden hose, okay? With a lot of imagination, this is a garden hose, okay? So anyone is familiar with how a garden hose and a nozzle operate. Here you have water, which is a liquid, under pressure. And when you turn the nozzle on, then it's going to spray. And what that does, you see a lot of small droplets of water coming out of your nozzle right here. Because now it has a lot of room to expand to where here it was very, very restricted. So all the molecules were together and it was a liquid. Now here is still a liquid but they are, like I said, small droplets of liquid. So same thing. Here you have high pressure liquid that is approaching the expansion valve. Flow gets restricted, same way it does right here on a sprayer on your garden hose. Then small droplets of liquid start traveling. And so you can get a better visual. I made this other drawing. So here you see the droplets going through and what's happening in here in this evaporator core when you turn your blower on air is being forced through it through this fins right here and as the air passes through the refrigerant that's in these lines right here they're going to absorb the heat because remember the heat usually travels from warm to cold so anything that's cold is going to absorb or attract heat. So the refrigerant is colder and as it passes through the lines and the air that is inside your car is being forced through the fins, that refrigerant will start absorbing that heat. So then it starts changing from a liquid to a vapor because the refrigerant has a very low boiling point. I'll show you what it is in a second. And even though the lines and the evaporator is going to feel cold to the touch, that refrigerant is actually boiling because like I said, it has a very low boiling point. So now that you understand this, I'm going to show you the boiling point of the refrigerant. That way you understand how come it's actually boiling if it's so cold to the touch. So here are two of the most common refrigerants that have been used on vehicles for many years now. The first one was the R12. Its boiling point is minus 21.6 degrees Fahrenheit. This refrigerant is no longer found on vehicles because it was determined that it damages the ozone layer. After the R12 became banned just about, the R134A was introduced and its boiling point is minus 15.3 degrees Fahrenheit. The advantage of the R134A refrigerant is that it can be purchased at any local auto parts store because it's a DIY product and so far it's considered safe for the ozone which it may or may not be, how do we know? But either way, it's very likely that if your car was built after 1996 it's going to have R134A and take note that these temperatures are at a sea level which Atmospheric pressure at sea level is 14.7 psi because these temperatures are going to vary depending on the pressure. So we're talking 14.7 psi, these are the boiling points. 
Okay, so here's the note that I wrote. That way I wouldn't forget. The liquid line temperature, which the liquid line is the high pressure one, in case you already forgot, is relevant to the ambient temperature. When it enters the AC condenser, it's about 30 degrees higher than the ambient temperature. And as it leaves the AC condenser, it's usually within 10 degrees higher than the ambient temperature. So here's an example. Let's say the ambient temperature is about 90 degrees Fahrenheit. That means the liquid line temperature is going to be about 100 degrees Fahrenheit after the AC condenser. And also, no different than boiling points at ambient temperature, different pressures are going to create different temperatures on the line. This is just a rule of thumb. So we're going to check our temperatures in real life. We're going to see what the lines are going to read. I'm going to start the car and turn the AC on. The temperature reading is about 160 on the line that is entering the AC condenser. So here I have the thermometer on the line that is coming out of the condenser. We're going to look at the temperature. And it's about 100 degrees. This car doesn't have an expansion valve. It's equipped with an orifice tube. You can see the crimp right here. So before finalizing the video, we're going to see if the 160 degree temperature that we had on the liquid line as it entered the AC condenser was normal. So the temperature was somewhere between 90 and 95. So the pressure shouldn't exceed 300 psi. That would be like the highest. So now if we look at the gauge to see what a 300 maximum psi would be as far as reading and temperature. So we aim it closer, so here's 300 maximum, and as far as degrees, that's 160. If you look inside, the inner number is Fahrenheit, so yeah, it was accurate. So remember what I said, 30 degrees higher than the ambient temperature is a rule of thumb, because you still have to consider the pressures that you're working with. And as you can tell, if you start going lower on the pressures, then you start dropping in temperature. So that's why the pressure is going to affect the temperature of the refrigerant directly. And there you have it. Now you know how the AC evaporator core works. If you want to learn the function of the rest of the components, make sure you subscribe to our channel. That way you don't miss any videos. I'm also going to include a link to another video I made that explains the entire function of the AC system in case you want to watch it. In the meantime, thanks for watching today's video and we'll see you next time.